Dude, you want to know one of my favorite Abraham Lincoln quotes? What's that? Is, not everything you read on the internet is true. Alright, so welcome to Man Shit Podcast. We're sitting here. This is our, our pilot, our debut episode. Um, I'm sitting here with my PIC, Emmett Webb, the one and only. Uh, the what are you, are you rocking a mustache right now? What do you got the I, is that the I am man, I, I shaved the goatee. It's the <laughs> summer season, it's hot, it's humid out here right now. And dude, I just had to whittle it down to the mustache. Yeah, so. the, the ginger vagina filter right there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Jesus. Yeah, welcome to Man Shit, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you're a boy or a girl, you probably need to turn this shit off because your parents will not approve. Basically, what we're here to do, we're here to talk about a little bit about what we do and, uh, you know, just talk to some of the people that we've been fortunate enough to meet. And, uh, you know, they do man shit. We live in a world today that I feel like uh, I can speak for Emmett and say... It's sickening at the lack of testosterone that we have in the in the male part of the society these days. And we just want a source for you to come to and maybe breathe a little in. Anyways, let's get uh, let's get on point here. So my name is Eric Lewis. Um, I'm joined by my, my main man, my PIC, my business partner, Emmett Webb. Together we operate Pork Choppers Aviation along with a plethora of other projects, but uh, essentially what Pork Choppers Aviation is, if you couldn't pick it up from the title, you'll understand quickly. It is a helicopter hog hunting service. Um, I call it hunting. It's actually depredation. Basically what we do is we aid landowners in our area in Texas in controlling the coyote and wild hog population. I'm not going to dig too much in that, uh, by the way, Emmett, I don't know if you know this, but Pork Choppers Aviation is our number one sponsor because oh. I paid for all this equipment and you paid for your equipment. <laughs> oh, wait. That's us. How about that? Yeah. We sponsored ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. So uh, you want to do a brief intro of yourself? Well, guys, my name, obviously, I am Emmett. I am the pilot for Pork Choppers Aviation. Um. What can I say? What can I say? Um, I like beer. I like women. I like things that go fast. Um, we'll go... And boom. Yeah. Things that go fast and go boom. We'll go a little deeper into each of those subjects the further that you get into our podcast series of man shit. But for right now, we'll stick to just kind of the basics of who we are, what we are, and what we do, and why we do them. So... Absolutely. So basically, Emmett and I have been working together for several years. Um, I've been in the industry, as you know, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Emmett's been in the industry for longer than I have because he's it's kind of in his family. He's, uh, his dad's a helicopter pilot. Uh, they've handled depredation projects, things like that. Um, I came in, we, we kind of joined forces uh, with another one of our buddies, Gideon Carmichael, and uh, just started slaying and stacking. And, and, uh, that's, that's kind of what we do. So, you know, uh, we, we book these hunts, we have clients from all over the world come in. Uh, it's, it's a pretty cool gig. You know, we get to meet people that are a hundred percent. I wouldn't even say 99.99%. It's a hundred percent like-minded to us. You know I mean? We, we damn sure didn't have any Hillary supporters this past season. No, (laughs) we were (laughs) fresh out. I don't know. There's that one guy in all that tack gear. I kind of wondered. The, what gear? The the one guy in the, all the tack gear. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he probably just didn't vote. He was one of those. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, <laughs> moving on. So this is just a small taste of what you're gonna have to put up with if you subscribe to this shit. Just gotta get ready. But uh, we do that. We have people come in literally from all over the world. Um, if you know about us already, it's probably through social media and you probably get annoyed with some of my personal posts and you probably love all the posts of things getting killed from the helicopter. I can't really help it. 
but I don't have enough content to feed out there nonstop pig killing. So I have to throw some other shit in there. If you don't like it, you can kiss my ass. That's kind of the cool part. That's actually one of our, um, one of our mission statements is if you don't like it, you can kiss our ass, right? Right. Man, that is a great part about being self-employed. But anyhow, it looks like you're drinking a, what are you drinking? A Mickey Ultra? Yeah, dude, I'm drinking my, my housewife, white girl beer. I'm going to stay skinny. I'm going to keep the lie, weight man. down. Got to keep the dude, weight these, down, man. These Coors Lots are, dude, my, my man bod is starting to go, like I'm getting dad bod. And, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to do something. I don't well, know. You remember what they taste group, so good. You remember what Keaton's group called those? They called those pork chops because they were a whole damn meal. That's what they called Coors Lights? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if but, you eat a meal and then drink those, then you start gaining weight. It's fucking <laughs> bullshit. Anyway, so let's move on. We're, we're getting on a tangent here, but I think we're going to have, if I had to guess, we're going to have people who like guns. We're going to have people who like killing stuff. We're going to have people who like flying. We're going to have people who like military shit. So tonight, neither of us are military. We know a lot of guys that are, and we'll have them on in the future. But tonight, we're going to be kind of focusing more on uh, the the who we are and the flying and all of that fun stuff. So Emmett, you've been flying for a long time, man. Like you're pretty young. Um, you're younger than I am. My old ass. My <laughs> I say old ass. I'm 31, but I feel like I'm 52 sometimes, especially when I start picking shit up and my lower <laughs> back starts hurting. But so when did you start flying, man? I know your dad flew and everything, but man, I started flying whenever I was probably about, I think the first time I took the controls, I was probably 11, 12 years old, maybe. Um, you know, I was out on a job with my dad. My dad, you know, of course he's owned and operated his own helicopter company, small helicopter company out of the Texas Panhandle successfully um, for the last 35 plus years and so that's just kind of how i grew up was you know working in around on helicopters and um you know i hear a lot of guys say oh i remember my first time in a helicopter and that's how i knew i was hooked like man i don't fucking remember that shit i was like two months fucking <laughs> old like that's 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 how deep it goes into my veins you hear people say driving second nature to them dude being in a helicopter is second nature to me it's just it's how it is, you know. Um, but I've been, I've been so, doing so, it so like you would life. say, you would say, kind of like flying, like if if someone's dad, like like my family's big into uh, like drag racing shit, like yeah, that. absolutely, time, it's the same thing. It's the same exactly, thing. like exactly. Gotcha. So that's badass, and, man. Like I, I kind of knew this, but <clears throat> you know, it's always we take it for granted. I think how cool our setup is. Like oh, a lot of people would agree with that. So. So, yeah, you've been flying for a while. It, it sounds like right now you're flying your ass off, you know? Sounds like you're yeah. flying more than a work week, which I don't know <laughs> if people understand how much flying that really is. You know, you fly fucking 50 plus hours a week. That's not like working 50 hours. That's It's a whole different deal. Oh, oh I mean, no. The the, the 50, 50 hours is just the start of it. They're not there for the pre-flight and the post-flight. Yeah. All the shit that goes on. Before, after, and in between the scenes, you know. Uh, yeah. It's it, it's not all strippers and burritos. You know, no. <laughs> that's on the weekends, man. Sometimes. <laughs> weekends. That, that's another thing that sucks. That pork choppers, we get our weekends all fucked. Like, it's yeah. All, <laughs> it's, all, <laughs> it's all, we're all done. Like, we get to party on Tuesdays. Who's out on a Tuesday? <laughs> we just look like a bunch of alcoholics. Yeah, I know. That is no kidding. No, right now, man, I'm currently going out at, at uh, I just turned in 103 flight hours for the last two weeks. That's more than most people fly in a year. You go talk to the medevac people, you go and talk to the dudes out fighting fire and being all hardcore and whatnot. They're, they fly maybe 50 hours a year. I flew yeah, 100 sure. hours in the last two weeks. So not toot my own horn, but it's that's a lot of a lot of freaking time. Yeah, man, I I I feel you. Like, um, so what is it they say during flight school that the like an an hour in it that it, of course this is different because you're you're confident flying, so it's not as stressful. It still is because of what you have to 
pay attention to. But they say like when you're in your flight training, like one hour of training is the equivalent uh, mentally taxing wise of like, I don't know, like four to eight hours or some bullshit like that. It, it, oh. Just because you're having to look at so many different factors. You know, you're, you're, you're having to pay attention to your gauges, uh, all of your inputs. Like you've got, it, it, you're like basically a double bass drum metal drummer all day. Oh. And you're having to watch for trees, power lines. You're having to watch your, you know, your manifold pressure if you're in a, you know, in a, just all and, kinds. Of, I don't know. I'll let you talk and, about it. I, I know a little, but in the utility ag world that that I work in, and the you know pork choppers, you know, does does its work in. Um, someone told me a statistic at one point that. One hour in the cockpit of a utility ag aircraft is the equivalent to a full day behind the desk, just mentally. That's mentally. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is it, it, it's mentally taxing. And I often tell people that don't get the comparison, okay, go spend yeah. 18 hours in a car. And well, they're and, like... And, and when you try to tell someone that's like, uh, you know, you try to tell a guy that's building fence all day, or farming all yeah. day, like one hour of that's the same as your whole day. It's, it's not that that's comparing apples and oranges. Like, oh, absolutely. Um, what, what, what that's a comparison to, like when I had my big boy job in San Antonio for a couple of years doing my marketing shit, yeah, it was stressful, but I was sitting at a desk in an air conditioner and I, you know, I'm doing things on the computer, sending emails, uh, doing all that shit my whole day, my eight hour work day. That's the same thing mentally. You know, because I would oh, go yeah, home at absolutely. the end of the day and I'd be tired and I oh, did yeah. nothing, you know, physically. So, physically, yeah. You know, it's it's the mental exhaustion behind it. Yeah. That's why I tell people, you know, have you ever driven 18 hours in a car? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you feel after the 18 hours? Oh, I feel wore out. I feel wore out. That's what it's like if you spend all day in a cockpit. Is It's that same type of just mental mental stress and that's the, probably one of the best ways to relay that to people and it really kind of clicks you know yeah so, but the the you're absolutely right uh as far as the the office work and getting getting that whole subject across yeah for sure hey are you still are you still hearing me good yeah i'm, I'm hearing you good yeah man like on my end it's like crazy robo can you hear me can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, we're good now. We're golden. So, all right. We were just talking about, <laughs> we were talking about the taxing part. Uh, taxes. Me, me, no, fuck taxes. Not taxing. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, but no, no, no that, it's, that it's completely, annoying. that completely makes sense, man. Just like the things you're having to pay attention to. Oh yeah. Like, to me, I mean, honestly, like no shit. I've got maybe. I've got maybe three hours of proper and four hours of improper training in a, a Robinson aircraft. <laughs> yeah. And and just the things that I've noticed. I mean, of course, it's just like anything. You know, like if, if someone who's never played a guitar or someone who's never edited a video or someone who's never fucking, I don't know, driven. Like it's really hard. But once you've yeah. done it for a while, it becomes instinctive. But with a helicopter and drive, and like, like let's take driving. Everybody drives, for the most part. Every adult drives a vehicle. When you compare that to flying, you have to look at, I mean, it's like you add a new axis. Like, you don't have left, right. You don't have lanes. You're, you're fucking fluttering in the air. You're a goddamn oh. butterfly, is what you are. <laughs> and and you've, got, you've got left, right, up, down, forward, back. And then everything in between. So that that makes total sense. But dude, could could you imagine the mental exhaustion if you and I switch places for one day no. on one of our hunts, dude? Dude, I would well, be for, so for one thing everyone I, would die. That's dude, the <laughs> other <laughs> Everyone would fucking die if I, I flew. That just throw I'd have mental exhaustion trying to figure out how to have to deal with the lawyers after that one. But like me, just like having to deal with like the guns and like the paperwork oh. and the like. Oh it, man, it come, be, yeah, every freaking. everybody does their part. Everybody that's, does their part. The, that's why you do you and I do me. <laughs> that's exactly why. Anyhow, so you've been flying for a while. Um, what does 
what does that do for the for the for the dating game? <laughs> oh lord. Cuz I I know the I know the history. Like you used to be you used to be like a uh, you had standard about it, you know? The whole you can't use that for a pickup line. You can't use the helicopter pilot for a pickup line. Like you want to talk a little about that? You know, so it's it's kind of a funny story. I, as well as our third counterpart, who is on vacation, he and I always had an agreement that, like, if we were in the bar and we were talking to women, that, like, it, you couldn't tell them that you were a helicopter pilot because, like, that's, like, dude, that's like shooting fish in a barrel. Like, <laughs> it, if you if you have so, to so, use so, wait 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 before you continue forth did you guys ever do that did you ever use um did you ever use that and then it was like holy shit this is too easy or how did that go or is it just a known it was a known factor so you moved forth it was known <laughs> it, I'm pretty sure dude I'm pretty sure commercial airline pilots get laid because they're pilots and they do nothing. Oh. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> They're bus drivers. You, you know, the way that we always looked at it, Gid and I, was like, if you have to tell them that you're a pilot, and that is what you open up with, and that is your instant go-to, you have absolutely zero game. We always had a game to where you had to try and make a woman believe just the absolute most insane shit. And I mean, it ranged anywhere, and I'm pretty sure like this may or may not have been stolen from American Sniper Chris Kyle's book. Um, and that was convincing women that you're a dolphin waxer that works at SeaWorld, or you work inside a red box handing out DVDs, or you handed out the cash in ATMs and. You know, it was absolutely insane the amount of shit that you could, as, as long so, as you sounded like you knew so what you were like talking hand, about. Handing out movies at Redbox. Did you ever use that? No. Did you use the ATM one? I didn't use the ATM one. I used the Dolphin Waxer one quite frequently. Did it work? Like, did they uh, believe you ever? Yeah, actually, they did. But, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Are you so, shitting me? So, like, like so, you wax dolphins where? At SeaWorld or what? Dude, okay, so get this. So the ATM and the red box, that was that was Gid's deal. I started perfecting the dolphin waxer part, especially whenever I lived down in the Caribbean. Um, I had this girl believing that I was working for the University of Corpus Christi and they the had Caribbean. Sent, they they had sent me all the way down to the Caribbean, you know, from the Gulf of Mexico. And dude, I ran into this chick like three nights at a bar, and don't ask me why I I couldn't or didn't close. I've drank too much rum since then. Whiskey and, dick. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even get that far. Um but I had this chick believing that I was a dolphin waxer, and like night three of her stay on this small Caribbean island, she runs into me at the bar, and she's like, "Hey, you know, I uh, my friends are going diving tomorrow over at Salt Key, and I don't dive, and I was wondering if I could go out with you on, you know, one of your your research expeditions tomorrow, <laughs> and I could." you know, help you for say wax the dolphins. She <laughs> wanted to go. She, she wanted, wanted to go. go. I haven't even heard this story. Are you shitting me? I, she I wanted to go for real. Not. I kid you not. Dude. And I'm just like, I'm like, oh shit. What do I do here? What do I do? And I'm thinking, cause like all my buddies down there were divers. So they dive boats and shit like that. Yeah. I probably could have commandeered or talked a moment into like, you know, Here's here's some beer, Joe. Take me out on the fucking boat with this chick and pretend we're looking for fucking dolphins, you know? And I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm like, fuck, they all have to work the next day. Like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I finally have to get straight with this chick and be like, look, um, I did tell you something. She's like, well, what's up? I'm like, well, like, I'm not actually a dolphin waxer. 
Dude, and you have thought I told this girl that the fucking Easter Bunny was not real, dude. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, her feelings destroyed. And she's like, well, why did you have to lie to me? Why did you have to lie to me? And I'm like, you know, like, just to avoid the, the normal, like, 40 questions people play whenever I tell them that I, what I actually do. And she's like, well, what do you actually do? And I tell her, I'm like, I, I fly a helicopter. And she's like, well, you couldn't have just told me that? Like, that's really cool. Dude, she, like, just completely walked away, turned around, went to the other side of the bar with her friends and would not make eye contact with me. Like, I'd try to, like, send her <laughs> no a drink shit. just as, like, a nice gesture. Like, nothing. The funny part is, I think she she felt bad because I, I think she felt kind of dumb afterwards. Come to find out, she was a doctor or had her doctorate, maybe. Wow. So, that is, that is that is walking proof, living, breathing proof that being book smart and being common sense smart they're two, two different big, things. Two big fucking different things. Because someone who's actually what I would consider smart, if a motherfucker came up to me and said, if, if, let, let's say it was a drop-dead gorgeous big titty blonde comes up, right? And she says, hey, you know, I waxed the dolphins at SeaWorld. I say, get the fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> there's no <laughs> yeah. fucking way. You wax a goddamn animal. Like, they, they swim naturally. They don't need no wax. It's not a surfboard, you fucking retard. But, <laughs> I mean, oh, man, it's just, that's that's what's so Dude, bad. Like, that's that's like why, I like, like I, I give, like, okay, so, uh, so we've got a buddy named Luke Terry. He works on uh, wind turbines and shit like that, and we have a group Snapchat that we always end up texting through which is stupid because we could just fucking we could just text message but that is that is the younger generation i have to thrive in and um it's uh it just the things that happen it's it's I, i'm super jealous i'm not gonna lie i'm super jealous because i didn't have tinder i didn't have bumble i didn't have that i had to go to the bars and i had to just roll the dice and and see if i could meet someone who was drunk enough or or attracted enough to, to to roll with the punches and see where the night took us. And you guys get these new apps that are like you have apps that it's like a booty call app. I don't understand. Like how the <laughs> fuck? How the fuck is that fair? Like like I, and I honestly think like I think realistically. For, first off, lay, lay down the the premise for what I'm talking about. Like what is like baseline? If somebody had never heard of Tinder, never heard of Bumble. Baseline it. It is the eHarmony for people in their 20s. <laughs> eHarmony. People get married off eHarmony, dude. <laughs> There's like one out of a million get fucking married on Tinder <laughs> or Bumble. Hey, you know what, man? There's the more is- Ill- There's more bastard children born from Tinder than any other app on the planet. <laughs> you know, but but real time though, I was I was actually having this conversation with a coworker of mine. There's like there's only actually yeah, there's out of like the five guys that are out here working right now, only one of them is married and has kids. The rest of us, you know, we're, we're all single and whatnot. And I was, I brought this this topic up with them because two or three of them are on Tinder and Bumble and uh, I think one of them's on. I think the other one's plenty of fish. Um, plenty and, of fish. Yeah, it's it's another. That's one an app. One. That's an app. I've never heard of this one. Oh, it gets better. There's another <laughs> one I learned. You you thought you thought I knew it all when it came to online dating. No, I just found out there's one called Fet Life. Called short what? for Fet Life. F E T. Short for fetish. Life. Oh, so if you're into feet jack offs and shit like that, yeah, I just found out this is a thing. And like, man, like, I'm not gonna go that that deep dark into the web. Like, that's not my forte. <laughs> like, I'm into some kinky shit, but am I gonna go log on online like that and find something? No, no, no. no dude. That, that's 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 the ones you watch in the bathroom when nobody's with you. 
You dude, don't talk about them. Dude, that's how you end up in a hole in somebody's basement with some guy like yeah. dropping fucking lotion down to you, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> but you put it on your skin, though. <laughs> and I probably just sound like I'm trying to justify, you know, the online dating apps and whatnot. But I was having this conversation with the guys and they all kind of agreed, like, as far as Tinder and Bumble or Plenty of Fish, whichever one you want to use... It is whatever you are looking for. If you're looking for a random hookup, you can find it there. If you want to go on like an actual date, you know, you can find that as well. I know several people. I know actually plenty of people that have gone on dates. Some went good. Some went bad. I've had yeah. both. And that was that. But there are some very interesting people on these online dating sites to say the least so oh, i know and, and like i've never gotten to like go on tour with you like so wh where are you at right now man i'm actually out in ohio um the the company that i'm doing the seasonal work for right now uh, they've got me out in ohio we're working in west virginia um needless to say so, the so, so you're on u.s tour like you're bouncing around east coast like kind of kind of midwest shit like the only time I'm ever around you guys is when you're at home base or main, uh, you know, uh, FOB, I guess you could call it. <laughs> yeah. But around Haskell, Podunk ass, Texas, which is essentially the closest town or city with people that actually know how a cell phone works and know how to download an app would be Abilene or maybe Wichita Falls. So yeah, I've seen the same crap over and over. Which there are some funny ones, you know, like the oh yeah, you know, there's always some some uh, ones that give a chuckle. But uh, you know, right now, <laughs> you, you guys like you and Luke start sending me these texts, and it's like what the fuck? Like you, you motherfuckers, like it, it, it's like y'all can get nudes with with never even even being in the same building as someone with these apps. It's, it's super cheating it's super not dude, fair <laughs> dude i'm not, i'm not and i will throw myself under the bus here i'm not that good luke, luke terry is like he can pull the nudes dude dude who would have thought, he, okay for anybody that doesn't know luke terry he is like and emmett at any moment you tell me shut the fuck up stop if i'm if i'm off base luke terry is the small town Nice guy, quiet, doesn't party hard, doesn't try to drink a whole 30 pack in one night, willing to drive anybody home to keep them out of trouble. Nice dude. Would you? It, that's a pretty I, good. And, and his hair agree. goes down to his fucking shoulder blades. He's got the longest dude hair ever. <laughs> he, he, looks, dude, he looks like the skinny version of Travis Tritt. Travis Tritt, super skinny, and he sings country music on his in his spare time. We got yeah. those snaps where he was making up those Dos Equis commercials. Like, <laughs> they were good. They were good. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought so. Like I, I was like, fuck, I'd watch that commercial. But that's that's who we're talking about here. That's pulling the nudies. I hope his <laughs> mom's listening. <laughs> Dude, he's he's gonna text us after this comes out, and he's be like. Dude, you, you guys gotta take that shit down. <laughs> Sorry, Luke. And we're gonna be like, nope. But yeah, dude, it's online dating is it's a odd place. Is all I yeah, have to I, say. I, I feel like um for a I don't know, like twenty to twenty, like I don't know, like I guess what I'm trying to say, like if you get to the point where it's kind of like where you actually start getting serious, online dating gets complicated. Like if you're yeah. serious about it. If not, it's not that big a deal. I like I said, dude, online dating is whatever you are looking for. It's the internet, right. man. You the world is your oyster. Is that how that fucking saying goes? I don't fucking remember. Dude, I'm I'm like I'm like the Ricky of trailer park boys with fucking up sayings. But. All right. So, so we've talked about that long enough, I feel like. Okay, so let's turn the cards. I feel like everybody got... Why don't you pick a topic? Okay, well, Eric, how about you tell me about yourself? Introduce yourself to the people. 
What would you like to know? <laughs> so I'm an open book. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's why it's tough. That's why it's tough. Um, so you're not originally from Haskell. You're originally from Knox City. Most people listening to this right now probably don't know, know where Haskell or Knox City are. But, yeah, either you one. Know, you know, we talk a lot about uh, being from small towns and you hear people go, oh, yeah. I'm from a small town. And you say, well, how, yeah. how big is the town you're from? They're like, oh, there's 40,000 people here. Yeah. Why don't you give a little Dude, background I, about the town you're from and, so, and so, growing up so there? So piggybacking off of that, like I, I had people the whole time, like when I went to college, I thought I was going, you know, to to big time, you know, it's college time. Oh, excuse me. So I graduated high school. I was actually valedictorian. I was number one. You guys don't even know. I was first place in a class of 26, okay? I beat 26 other people out on, on my intelligence level. So I'm a smart <laughs> motherfucker. You guys should listen to me and anything I say, you need to take it as truth. Hurrah. <laughs> Shit, I, I choked on that. I almost died from lying. But no, I really did finish valedictorian. So I went, being a small town guy, just to break it down, the high school I graduated from was Knox City High School. Knox City, none of you have heard of unless you are from Knox City. It is a town with, when they do a census, they actually count the cats and the dogs, and they come up with about 1,200 people. That's counting the cats and dogs. So, um, did that, you know, uh, I've always been from the small town. I was born in all these small areas, and graduated there, went to college in Wichita Falls, Texas. When I get to college, everybody there is like, oh, you know, I would meet people, and I've always been a really social guy. You know, I'm not afraid to talk, and... Just bullshit and meet new you people. I'm um, what? I said you aren't. No, Sarcasm. no, no. I'm open <laughs> and honest. I'm an open book, motherfucker. I already told you. So <laughs> you choked me. But so I get to college and uh, you know everything's going good. I'm meeting people. I get a job working at Texas Roadhouse, which was uh, you know the first job I had. I worked for my dad. Uh, he has a auto body mechanic shop, so I'm sure it was similar to your childhood. Yeah. Your dad has a aircraft mechanic shop, so you know you and I both grew up turning wrenches and sweeping floors and sweeping floors and sweeping floors and sweeping <laughs> floors and sweeping floors, <laughs> kind of deal. And, oh, and then detailing. You probably got to detail some helicopters, didn't you? Oh. I got to detail oh, some man. cars, detail some cars, detail some cars. <laughs> but um, no, nah, uh, so. Went to school and my country ass gets there. Wichita Falls is still, you know, north central Texas, right at the Oklahoma border. Like it's all country people. I think Wichita Falls has just a shade over a hundred thousand population, and everybody there would say they were from a small town. And I'd be like, "Where are you from?" They're, oh, here in Wichita Falls. Oh, over in so and so town. And and I look up the population. It's like forty thousand, fifty thousand people. It's like. Fuck you. You don't know what being from a small town is like. Yeah. Where you've got, you got two choices for lunch. One of them is, uh, actually I should say four choices. One of them is Mexican food. One of them is Dairy Queen. One of them is Mexican food. And one of them is Mexican food. That is small town Texas. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, and anyway, all, all that aside. So did all that, went to college, uh, got out. Uh, started working for a guy that did the helicopter stuff, kind of learned the the name of the game, broke off, did my own deal. Pork Choppers Aviation is born 2013. I meet Gideon and Emmett. We start rolling, start uh, you know running a lot of hunters through, growing our, our property areas, doing fun shit, meeting the coolest people that you can imagine on this planet. They... I wish people could meet everyone that we get to meet. It's insane. Like the, whether they're clients or whether we meet them at trade shows, these people are just, it, it gives you hope in humanity. So, uh, you know, we've been doing this for years and uh, within the last year, Emmett's been my full-time PIC uh, partner in crime. We've been, I don't know. I, I think our PIC in this maybe started in Shreveport, Louisiana. Maybe. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, a few years. We're not going to go into that because we don't know the legalities of what went down. <laughs> <laughs> I know there were a lot of American Express black cards that weren't ours, and um, there was limitless uh, anythings. 
And that's not good for us. That's not good at all. We need limitations. We need regulations. So <laughs> anyhow, moving on. So more you know, government. We've, we've just huh? More government. Yeah, I'm right. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just come off. I would have to attest the most successful season that pork choppers has ever had. I actually lived two years in San Antonio. I was working for a large uh, member-based organization down there. Um, I I resigned, and it, it's for anybody in the area. It was Texas Trophy Hunters Association, and I left there to move back closer to family. We had a child. Um, I do I do these things. I also do video productions, <laughs> things like that. Emmett's got like a 19 inch fucking switchblade to pick a fingernail out right now. <laughs> Anyhow, move back closer to family because we had a daughter. In uh, October of 2016, we are knocked up with daughter number two, which I was 100% certain is son number one. And God served me my next uh, losing poker hand. So <laughs> I'm probably going to have to have three fucking kids. Anyhow, that's that's a brief uh, rundown on that. So let's start. Let's, uh, you know, we've kind of given an intro of what people are getting themselves into. Let's start bouncing some shit back and forth. So right now you are in, you said Ohio? Yeah. So what What? What exactly, I know, so just to give you guys a, a little breakdown, a lot of these things that when, if you email us and I say that our, our pilot's out on contract, there are a lot of, of non-disclosure agreements that have to go down because there's a lot of proprietary information that happens. Uh, there are a lot of, of of uh, pieces of equipment that are are only available to certain people, and it's we have to keep that stuff stapled up. It has to be lip tight, you know, lip sealed type of stuff. Anyhow, so if he's really discreet about it and it doesn't make sense, that's uh, that's your problem. You gotta you gotta deal with that. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. I just want to give a disclaimer, a, a little asterisk. So I'm working for a ag. It's an agricultural. Utility company. We got oh, it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> but you know, some of these people aren't aviation. I know, um, I know, I know, I know. And we take so we th- take our awesome lives for advantage. Uh, yeah, to advantage it, yeah, we yeah, we do. Um out here the company is based out of Indiana, but we're out right now in Ohio and West Virginia working, um, fixing to be in the Appalachians. And I can't go into full detail about what it is exactly that we're doing or who we're doing it for, like Eric said, due to NDAs and proprietary stuff. But needless to say, um, we're we're doing some environmental stuff, you could say. Um, we're spreading seed um, with... <laughs> slinging that seed everywhere. Yep, yep, slinging Not seed. Not through Tinder seed. either. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it's, it's pretty much busy work until we go back to doing aerial sledge during the fall. Um, you so, know, so let me ask you this. Let me cut you off. Are you missing killing shit yet? I am absolutely missing killing shit. All right. So let me, let me break this down. Cause like, I, I'm going to assume, which you know what assumptions do. They make an ass out of you and me. That's what I've always heard. You don't like to assume, but <clears throat> this is uh, what I'm going to guess is this is our pilot episode, the number one uh, podcast. I think the people that are listening here already follow us. That's my assumption. They know what Pork Choppers does, what we do. They, and you, you know, there's going to be one like one person who's like their first day with podcasts and such. And yeah. this gets like brought up in their feed. And they're like, oh, I'm going <laughs> to click on it. And well, they just got ruined <laughs> on podcasts for the rest of their lives. You know, and 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 here's what I want to say. So, I'm gonna go off on this little tangent because you just fucking you uh what do they call you triggered me? You triggered me. So, <laughs> <laughs> I all right. So just if, if you are that person, I just want to let you know right now we have we have a pretty pretty decent um, social media presence. I've never thrown money at it. I just wanted it to happen organically because I want the people that like us to actually like us. I don't want 
people to just click a button and never look at what we put out. I want people who actually like what we do. And what are you tilting your fucking head for? You use the word organic. What'd you do? Fucking vote for Hillary? Jesus. No, god damn it. I'm talking about <laughs> fucking I'm talking hipsters. about I'm talking about I'm talking about social media metrics. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm not talking about weed. But anyway, when it does legalize in Texas, organic, me and you are going into business. Fuck yeah, we are. Yeah, we're going to make bank. It's going to be cash. We're going to put it in a safe, and we're done. Anyway, back on point. So, the uh, fuck. You got me all off kilter here. <laughs> <laughs> quit it. Quit it. You're distracting me. All right, I wish... Uh, you know what's going to happen in the near future is we're going to be recording the FaceTime call since Emmett and I are in different locations so that way you guys can see the things that I have to contend with in order to keep a professional podcast. But uh, anyway, so... Yep, you got me off. <laughs> I'm done. You're talking about your support and affection for the Hillary Clinton campaign. No, it's not a- anything whatsoever. <laughs> Organic. Uh, oh no, no, we were talking about if somebody got on here. <laughs> we were talking about if somebody got on here that had never seen it before. Basically, I deal with this shit every day. So um, I only, I, I actually do social media management for some other companies. So I. Uh, as a default, have kind of fucked myself into managing my own shit and keeping it on point. So whenever, you know, you see I only post like two, three posts a week, it's because I'm posting fucking 15 for other people in multitude. So anyway, um, that to be said, when I do these posts, man, these people that have never seen my shit before because they start getting tagged and shared and all that starts happening, everybody wants me to die. Everybody wants you to die too, Emmett. Like they they want us to fucking die, man. And um, it, it it's just you know, and I don't want to whine about it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stay on this very long because you and I have several friends. Uh, you know, Bam, Jeter, like all these guys that we 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 both know, and oh. um, they get the same thing. Anybody basically that kills animals and puts it on the internet, there's that oh. libtard fucking snowflake dumbass group that wants us all to die yeah and that's just how it is i used to let it bother me and i don't anymore but um you know that's that's just kind of that's what you have to deal with when you're throwing your stuff out there on social you have your free uh you know your freedom of speech and they have their freedom of ignorant rebuttal but i've actually started having a lot of fun with it man dude i i honestly cannot wait Whenever you post videos, because it's not like seeing, you know, our shit and our content and all that such. It's just like, I just wait for the comments and the people yeah. and just yeah. watching like, like the, the pork choppers fans just like just tear apart. Dude, they destroy oh, them. It is. Dude. So like, hilarious. Ha- I've never. Okay. So. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure you've noticed it too. Actually, no. I know you. You were the first one that sent it to me. Was the uh, the uh, top fan badge? You were the first yeah. person that sent that because obviously you're gonna show up as a top fan. Duh. Oh <laughs> shit. But you, dude, you sent me that. Dude, we got like fucking eighty top fans. That means they're like they're actively engaged. They are one hundred percent in. On every single thing we post, whether it's, uh, you know, like I did that window sticker of Donald Trump that was transparent on the back glass of that Mercedes AMG. Did you see that shit? (laughs) Bro, did you see how much it blew up? I got like 180 comments on Instagram about it. Nobody comments on Instagram. Are you shitting me? So, and it got negative. I had to delete some. Like I just, it was, I didn't have time to deal with it. I did. I, I didn't. Like I, I appreciate the the freedom of speech, like I really do. But when it gets out of hand and and it's super duper ignorant, if you're gonna be ignorant, you're getting deleted. Oh, absolutely. Hey, and you know, for any of the people out there, you know, and whether you're a top fan or not, but for sure the top fans. If you guys have any questions, shoot it to Eric, and you know we might answer that during the podcast. You know, if it, yeah. If it's festive enough, yeah, and, give us a good laugh, man. And just just like you said, though, like, so l- let me break this down. So, like, YouTube is kind of 
a uh, overlooked bastion of social media these days because it is yeah. because you can see the same shit on Facebook. So we have a social media channel that's actually I'm I'm really fucking happy with if it if it keeps going like it is I'm actually gonna get a YouTube silver play button which is a big fucking deal. We got twenty thousand subscribers. Uh, if we get to a hundred, we get the silver play button. It's <laughs> I I want to say that's like two to four percent. I I don't know that somebody's gonna contradict it. it it's sub ten percent. Big time of all YouTube channels out there make it to that point, yeah. and we're only a fifth of the way there. I mean, it, it, to me that I noticed that like two, three months ago. To me, that blows my fucking mind. Yeah, just but what we do, we take advantage of. We, I mean, fuck. When you grew up, did you go out on country roads, driving county roads with on four wheeler and shit? You know, you oh, did the yeah. same thing I did. But no, I mean, it's. If you have a question or if something doesn't make sense, let's say you've never seen one of our helicopter hog quote hunts. It's actually depredation, but let's just helicopter hog hunt videos. Let's say you never saw one. It comes up. It pisses you off. You get you get uh, triggered. You know, that's the new word. You need your safe space. Well, instead of telling me like most people do that you wish my mom, dad, wife, daughter... And unborn children would die of cancer? How about you just shoot me a fucking comment and ask me, you know, just say, hey, like, what's the deal? Like, what are you guys doing this for? This this kind of seems, this seems extreme to me. This seems wrong. And then, and then I, will, I will gladly respond with a full description of the fact that the helicopter... Uh, hog hunting is only legal because the feral hog has overpopulated the state of Texas to the point that farmers are losing millions and millions of dollars. And to keep the feral hog population at bay, you have to kill 80% of them. And that is to keep them at the same population they currently are. If you kill less than that, they grow. So just oh, fucking ask. You, don't, don't wish that Emmett and I burn in a fucking fire in a house like that's just mean it's mean dude <laughs> hell you it's super mean you, it's super mean you don't even have to shoot his questions about hog hunting man the our podcaster you want relationship advice eric and i are great at relationship advice oh dude I, we will keep you married for days i ask his wife <laughs> she is she can't tell you how happily married she is. Oh, fuck you. She's super happy. That was... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was a dick comment. That, no. was a, that was a jab onto the table. No. That's like getting slapped in the nuts when you're trying to talk on the phone. No, no, no. What I meant that is, <laughs> is ask her how happily married she is like whenever I'm around. And it's like... 11 o'clock at night, and we're sitting on the porch drinking. Um, uh, oh, she put up with she it. She put up with it. And the and are you are you trying to lead into like where the chocolate lab's gone? <laughs> and it's snowing. No, I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even try to go on to that. But uh, we'll save that for another day. Oh, no, the, well, you know what? We've already sparked the interest. <laughs> so basically, what happened it, is it was Emmett, Luke, and I. Was that New Year's Eve or my birthday? Yeah, it was your birthday. Maybe it's, it's New one Year's day Eve. different. Yeah. So either way, we're More safe. Two. So my birthday's on December thirtieth, and we went out. We were smoking a stogie, drinking a little bit of. Uh, I think we had Forty Creek. It was Forty Creek. It was Forty. Yeah, yeah, because we were still. Yeah, so uh, Forty Creek on the porch, on ice. Uh, you know, just smoking a couple of stogies. I don't remember what they are. Um, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, we're sitting out there. We stay out there just bullshitting, talking, uh, solving world problems. And then it's like, okay, we're tired. It was probably 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Time to go to bed. So we go back in, close up the door. One small detail. I have a chocolate lab who's about five years old, and he's a hell of a hunting dog. And he follows me everywhere I go. We let him out to be courteous. And he, he got out, and apparently, 
when we were out there just talking and solving the world's problems, he decided to go on an exploration run underneath the uh, carport of our house. And he was still exploring when we went back inside. So we all fall asleep. Luke passed out on the couch. Where'd you pass out? In the guest bed? Yeah, I'm thinking the guest bed. No, I yeah, think I, it, yeah, not recliner. Yeah, no, you were permanent here at that point. Yeah. you were, <laughs> you were a permanent living. You were in the guest bed, and I was asleep. Well, all of a sudden, my wife Caitlin wakes up at probably three a.m. It's snowing. It's like one or two degrees, and when it's that cold in Texas, it is fucking cold. Anyway, she wakes up and goes, "Where's Bo?" That's my dog's name, Bo, and. <laughs> We all kind of wake up like we're in trouble (laughs) trying to figure out what's going on. Well, the fucking dog isn't in the house. So we don't like first instinct is open the back, uh, open the back door and see if he's in the backyard. Cause we have, uh, you know, it's fenced in scream at him. Nothing. Go out in the front, scream at him. Nothing. So my wife is freaking out and I'm not going to say we were drunk. But I'd had enough to drink that it was, uh, I took my time getting dressed for my missing firstborn son, if that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm putting on my clothes. My wife's freaking out. I walk to the back door, open the door, and I go, boo, boo, you know, just trying to get him in there. And he's probably going to come running in here right now. And I hear him, I hear him run head first into the gate. And I start looking out there. like, Oh, hell, there he is. I had to go out there and let him in the gate. So basically what happened, just to, to sum this story up, we drank too much, smoked too much, and not weed, straight up cigar tobacco. Came back in the house, and the fucking dog got left outside. So when I went out, at the time I had a half ton uh, red Chevrolet truck I had scratches all down the side of it and uh, on the tailgate because he's used to being loaded up in the back door. And when I normally load him up, I help him up in there so he doesn't scratch anything. He was so cold that the poor dog had to jump in. He thought he had to jump in the truck to live. (laughs) So so I I got clear coat scratches and my wife was very disappointed in me. To start off the new year. So that, that you know, that's just, it's just normal one day. Just, <laughs> Dude, you know what's funny is like. Average Wednesday. The the person that like probably should have been like the most like just upset with us probably should have been Bo. You know? <laughs> oh, dude, I can still tell like when he's in the house now because since my wife and I both work from home. So if you didn't know that, we both. My wife has her office in the house, and I've got an office outside the house. When I when I look at my dog, he lays on the floor, and he's only five. Like he's still young. That that's thirty five in dog years. That's I'm not even that old yet, and I still feel pretty young, especially when I'm drinking. <laughs> but he he will lay there and look at you and just be like, "I'm so miserable. I'm so bored." But then we give him some excitement on a cold winter night. And I get in trouble about it. You know, we're just trying to be nice. <laughs> That's all we're trying to do. Dude, I all didn't right. even wake up for that debacle. I just walked into the kitchen the next morning. And I remember Caitlin, like, being in there. And I think she was feeding Langley breakfast or something. Like, she had this look. She's like, well, how are you feeling this morning? Like, just like, you know, that condescending <laughs> look. And it's like, oh, God, what did we do? And she's like, yeah, well... Y'all left Bo outside last night. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you didn't even remember it? No. <laughs> Dude, I, I do remember Luke didn't even wake up. He didn't give a shit. No. <laughs> he was just like, oh, I'm super seepy. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, shit. Well, anyhow, we just, we just did a jump over the hour mark. Holy Toledo. Catch us on the podcast. How about that? Yeah, how about that? But no, this is uh, this is pretty much what we want to do. I mean, everybody's so politically correct. There are a few other podcasts out there that do similar shit, 
we know that we're not trying to, uh, you know, be the reinvention of the wheel. We just feel like we have a perspective into an industry that nobody knows about, and uh, it's fucking fun. Like, yeah. uh, what? You know, I mean, you know what the, the just, funny part about this whole deal is, and I've been thinking about this for a couple of days because, you know, I've been I've been listening to a couple of podcasts, you know, just seeing how this whole deal works, and. The one thing that all these podcasts have in common that we don't, and you're listing off all the things that, you know, we might cover in a podcast. The one thing that you did not list, which neither one of us are into is sports. Like you and I could literally give zero fucks about sports. Everybody covers sports. And I, I honestly, yeah. Out of all the podcasts that I've listened to over the last couple of days, as soon as I start talking about sports and talking about oh. LeBron James gotta going to fucking yeah. LA or some bullshit like that, like I don't fucking care. No, <laughs> man. All right, you and I are both right wing, like extreme conservative. There's no contest. Yeah, I try to stay objective enough that. I like I will watch shit on Fox News even, and it's like, mm, you're getting too far, man. Like, <laughs> keep that shit in the middle, and you'll get people interested. Oh, absolutely, I, I, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. I see the celebrities doing it, and look, here's the deal: we live in an absolutely beautiful country that allows everyone to have their own opinion and have their own vote and be able to say and do what they want for sure. Which, that is absolutely great. It's America. That is America. That is fine. But, you know, there's so many celebrities that get out there. And once again, you know what? They're entitled to their own fucking, their own shit. But they don't understand how life works in rural America or anybody that earns less than fucking... 70,000 a year. You know, they don't fucking understand that fucking mind thought, that concept. They're so far out well, there. And, they, and to me, that's that's the same thing. Like, that's the issue with politics in general. Oh. Is there, they are, the way that po- uh, politics was originally set up is they are, they are set up to represent the people. Oh, yeah. You know, Yet, yet they know nothing of the majority of people. Absolutely, dude. Look at look at fucking Hillary Clinton's fucking campaign. Yeah, I'm I'm fucking going into this. But he'll dog. He'll dog. <laughs> dude, like right there at the end, she had like Jay Z and shit like performing on her fucking like campaign. Oh shows. yeah. What the fuck does Jay Z have to do with fucking any of this? Like nothing. Can, oh, like. Oh. Yeah, that's that's just man, that's the fucking world we live in, but <laughs> what I don't I don't know what to do about it. I, it makes me sick when people like Kim Kardashian and fucking Jay-Z and all these people. I mean, uh, and even Kanye West, like he's on the Trump train. <laughs> he's on the Trump train. Dude, that's great. That's cool. But even at that, like you are not an authority to sway people but dude that it's just like when you look at social media dude like if you have enough followers you can sway shit think about it if everybody that had like a million followers on uh instagram yeah absolutely at the next election said vote this way or you're not cool yeah. it they could sway elections and anyway dude. we we've danced off a topic we're getting on personal combo oh, oh absolutely <laughs> but, 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 you know, you, go ahead. You, you're talking about the whole Kim Kardashian thing, you know, and, and the Trump thing. Oh, big booty Judy. Yeah, booty Judy. Man, <laughs> I saw people posting, oh, Kim K went and saw Trump, you know, and it was right wing people like posting, like, oh, look, Kim K go. It's like, okay, like, if we're going to sit here and make fun of Hillary and Jay Z and all that bullshit, like, you can't fucking, like, really say shit whenever fucking like Trump's got fucking like Kim K in the fucking White House. Like dude, what's no. him fucking porn stars, man? Like <laughs> You gotta grab him by the pussy, Emmett. 
right, all right. Let's, let's get back on the fucking point here. We, yeah, we went down. We went down a rabbit hole. Jesus, dude, that's what happens, man. That's like you know when you get on YouTube and you start looking at shit, and then you're like you you were trying to figure out how to put a uh, like put a new fucking seat cover in your vehicle. And then you look up and you're looking at how uh, Comic-Con costumes are made or some bullshit. It's like, how did I get here? That's kind of what this podcast is. Dude, <laughs> really? <laughs> dude, <laughs> did I, I, you got the snap here a little while back, me in Indianapolis, and they had the fucking the Comic-Con Pride Week thing going on, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my Lord, dude. Like, <laughs> Dude, I would honestly... like. Fuck, I didn't even go to a Comic-Con Pride fucking one. Just to fucking be like, the people watching would have to be fucking gold. Oh, insane. Because Dude, the only the only people you see from Comic-Con are the hot oh, ones. Oh, absolutely. Like, well, and, and like, no homo, whether it's dude or girl, like... You only see the people who are legit. Can you imagine the ones that don't make the cut? Oh, my. Dude, I was in Indianapolis on, like, the final day, which is, like, day five of their fucking Pride Comic Con thing. And, like, did... What was it? Was it uh, LGBT? Was it, yeah. it was Pride Month Yeah, shit? it was Pride Month oh. shit. Whoa, that's next level. Yeah, dude. That's next level. It was real fucking special. And like I Oh I honestly oh, like I enjoyed walking around through that whole just like conglomeration of shit. Just like was, my mom yeah. was my mom and dad were there. My dad was at a some <laughs> sort of like conference or shit. <laughs> Right, Dad. What are, oh, it's, nice. it's, Pride, it's Pride Week in fucking Indianapolis. What conference are you fucking going to? Like, I had to give him all sorts of shit. No shit. But <laughs> uh, it, it was my mom and I are walking through there while he's this fucking conference thing, and we're looking at these fucking people, man. It's just like, holy shit. Where do these people hide? <laughs> I haven't even heard this story. Yeah, where do these people hide from the normal like nine to five, seven see, days a week? That, that's me too. Like, there's there's some of these places you see this shit, and you're like, where has this person been the the last three hundred and sixty four days of the year? Like, Dude, do they just run around in these outfits <laughs> all year? No, they just they they've been waiting, counting down to get out there and do this shit. And then they do it, and it's like, what the fuck? Dude, they make those people wearing the vagina hats look like fucking Cindy Lou Who, man. Like, it's insanity. Oh, yeah. Like, all right. I would say you and I are both pretty pretty much men's men for this day and age, and I love vagina. That's a safe, safe bet. You do, too. And it's like, those hats were ugly. <laughs> Dude, you know what's bad? You don't know what's bad. What's bad? This is our first. This is our first impression on people. Oh no shit! <laughs> you know what's cool though is that there's gonna be a lot of people that want to come because they're cool too. You know what's funny though is with the vagina hat thing is, you know, I was up in Alaska last season. I was up in the Arctic Circle in a in a National Science Foundation camp. Like, think about yeah. that for a minute. Think about the people that are going to be in, up there in that camp. Like, obviously, some people that are highly intelligent, some people, they're up there studying climate change and that whole thing. And there's a chick up there wearing a fucking vagina hat, dude. I, no I way. am at the fucking, I am out at the end of the world. End of the world. Dude. This chick comes walking through a camp and like, you know, like it took a, a triple, quadruple take. I mean, like, wait a minute. Like, I am almost <laughs> to the North fucking pole. And I just, this chick just came walking through camp wearing a fucking vagina hat. What in the literal fuck? That's just, I can't believe that. You were in fucking Alaska. No, so, yeah, I, and, I went, I went just, just to Alaska. Just, I was like in the fucking Arctic Circle. You were with the Inuits. Dude, I was... You were with yes, the Inuits, yes, huh? Yes, I was 
Yeah. Ten miles from an Inuit village. Hey there, white guy. Where the caribou? <laughs> hey, Edgar. <laughs> anyway, this is this is deteriorating quickly. So, anyhow, so basically, what we're gonna do, uh, it'll be Emmett and I are going to be your main peeps. He right now is in Ohio. Coming in August, he will be here local, and we will be uh, bringing in people. People that we know, people we met through the industry, people that I've met through uh, other avenues, we'll bring them in and uh, just talk about anything man. Like if it's something that I don't know. As, Basically, we live we live in a world that lacks testosterone. So I, I, I've got friends that go out and spear shit. I've got friends that go out and you know do military contracting. And I've got men, uh, uh, friends that are, you know, I, like one of my one of my best friends in life. No offense, man. Not, I mean, you're you're up there too. You're, yeah. It's not it's not a competition. <laughs> uh, you know, just people finishing up their, you know, training for Green Beret, shit like that. We want to bring into the spotlight people who are just like you, just like me, and enjoy life. We're not, I mean, obviously, Emmett and I own Pork Choppers Aviation. Yeah, come book a hunt with us. You want to come kill some pigs and coyotes out of a helicopter? Bring your ass. That's what we want. But what we also want with this podcast is just to just to be a source of killing the day's drive. I lived in San Antonio. I, I did the commute thing. It sucks. And you're sitting there wondering what you're doing. If you want to sit there and listen to us bullshit about stuff and, and listen to us, uh, you know, just... But I don't know. Make your life better. Like, like that's what we're here for. Here's the deal. You, you, What's up? Emma? You can listen to your your local radio DJ talk about fucking pop culture and fucking sports, or you can find something better to do with your time. Which I don't know if listening to us would be any better, but it's a damn good start. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot better start, and you don't have to listen to shitty music in between. I apologize. We're going to try to keep them to an hour because that seems to be the average for people's commutes. If you like this, please don't hesitate to leave us a review. Tell us what you think. I would really like it if you'd leave a five star. <laughs> but if you don't want to, then fuck it. You know, that's your freedom. That's that's the beauty of America. But just let us know. Send us a message. If you have anything you want to talk about, if you have anything you've ever thought about helicopter hog hunting or the aviation uh, from a rotorcraft in, uh, you know, rotorcraft side of things, send it to us. Send it to us on our Facebook page. We've got Pork Choppers Aviation on Facebook. we got Pork Choppers Aviation on Instagram. Emmett's Instagram, you want to drop your Instagram tag? Bahama Hilo Guy. Hey, you know, ask us whatever you'd like. You know, we'll, we may give you a shout out on the podcast. We may not. Yeah. You know, we may know the answer. We're fucking Wikipedia. If we don't know it, we'll fucking make some shit up and shove it down your throat, whether you fucking yeah. like it or not. Yeah. And, and the beauty of a podcast, we don't have to be, we don't have to be factually correct. We both honestly, like, no shit. If we say something, it's probably going to be researched. But that's, if that's one piece of advice, don't take everything as truth. Dude. You want to know one of my favorite Abraham Lincoln quotes is... What's that? Not everything you read on the internet is true. <laughs> you fucking dumbass. Anyhow, so <laughs> moving <laughs> moving forth amicably. <laughs> God damn, this is fun. So we're going to start doing this. Um, honestly, I don't, we, I don't really know what our schedule is going to be. Emmett's schedule is kind of sporadic right now. Uh, but once August hits, we're going to try to put these out at least once a week. So go ahead and subscribe, pay attention to your Spotify. And I will also be putting this out on our Facebook pages. So once again, this is Eric Lewis. Who are you? In my web. And we are signing out <laughs> with a gavel saying, thank you for listening. You just took a Big shot of man shit and even more manly shit's coming in the future. Thank you and have a good night. Gavel, please. 
I didn't get a rough out of that guy. Yeah, that guy. Harumph!